we slump on allowing the standards of Scripture and the Holy Spirit to inspect every rivet in our hearts and lives. And we go on day after day, cutting corners, wondering why we lose power on the climbs, and we stall. Accidents may often be the consequences of thinking that we know better. You know, Paul is warning Corinth. You're a lot like Israel. You are becoming too comfortable with the world. It is very easy to eat and to drink and to rise up and play because there is a lot in the world to idolize. But we can fight temptation with our guard up. You know, we can. We can fight this temptation if we put on the word of God, his armor and his breastplate of righteousness, and we can defend temptation, and we can, and we can be fine as long as our guard is up. But it's when we get comfortable that we let our guard down and we stumble. Paul is warning Corinth, you are idolizing things of this world. You are looking after yourselves rather than the journey. You are looking at what you want rather than asking where God is leading you and how you might follow him. And again, I ask the question, are we any different today? Have we humbled ourselves before God? Do we trust in him and submit our lives to him? This is a great message for Lent. That as we prepare our hearts for the coming of Passion Week and Easter, to ask this question is, have we let our guard down? And so Paul's words applies to us. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. These are challenging words from Paul this morning, very challenging, but as usual, Paul also has some words of comfort for us this morning. And those words of comfort begin in verse 13. He says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. author and minister Bob Russell says the following. He says, when I was a teenager, my mother had a rule. Don't ever bring your girlfriend to our house when no one is here. Okay, young kids, you hear that? Very good, very good rule. And, and I would always say, Mom, why? Don't you trust me? She always had the same answer. No, that's too much temptation. She did not say, well, it looks bad to other people, or I don't trust her, I, I do trust you. No, she said, no, that's too much temptation. Well, I would act like I was really hurt. My own mother doesn't trust me. That's terrible. And I'd walk away. But deep inside, I would think, my mother's pretty sharp. She knows what I'm thinking. My mother believed in the sin nature and that it needed to be restrained. My friends, we learned today that fighting temptation, it begins with fear knowing that God hates sin and he has been known to take care of sin if it gets out of hand. 
temptation, fighting temptation begins with fear, but fighting temptation continues then by not letting your guard down. And if we humble ourselves daily in godly fear, and we come to him, as we did here earlier, to ask his mercy and his strength, he will provide a way. Trust in him. Amen. This time we will have our offering, and uh, I encourage you to sign the friendship register as it comes around. We would like to uh, introduce a new song that we've never done before, and as uh, when we normally do this, uh, you're welcome just to sit back and meditate on the words, but you're, if you're familiar with it, and you may be as it's been on the radio, you're welcome to join in and sing along with us.
Let us stand for prayer. Dear Lord, um, history has so much to tell us if we only listen. The Israelites were your chosen people, a holy nation, a people set apart, but they became comfortable. And they no longer feared you, Lord. They no longer worshipped you. Rather, they worshipped and pursued worldly things. And they received your judgment. Lord, we today are your holy people and very capable of falling into the same trap. We read read today about how Paul warned the Corinthian congregation about history repeating itself as they became more worldly and comfortable And Lord, may this message resonate with us today. We understand your love for us. We we understand that you have sent your son into this world not to live comfortably, but to suffer and to serve humanity so that we might be forgiven our sins. But Lord, we often become comfortable in that good news and we take advantage of your grace. And help us to take heed so that we may not fall. Lord, temptation is all around us. And as we continue on our journey through life and through Lent to the cross of your Son, we ask for your mercy and strength, trusting that you will provide a way, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, you do not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. But in trial, you always provide the way of escape for us to bear it. So we pray that you will remember in pity all those whose faith is put to the test, who struggle with addictions, who feel abandoned. May you open the eyes of their spirit to sense you near them, And let them find in your word and sacrament the relief for which they beg. Lord, in your mercy.